Hi everybody. This graph is a familiar graph for you. You have seen in your textbook for many many times and uh, let's discuss the details of this graph today. This is known as oxygen dissociation curve. Welcome to Dr. Ashik's conceptuals. And before we are going to the topic, I have done a previous video on oxygen hemoglobin binding. Please do watch it because that video makes the basis of today's discussion here. So this is the oxygen dissociation curve and we shall go to the details of the oxygen dissociation curve. On the x-axis, you can see the partial pressure of oxygen or the PO2 is given. What is PO2? PO2 is basically the concentration of the oxygen is given there. And you can see it is given as 0, 20, 40, 60, 80 and finally it is given as 100 there. On the y-axis, you can see the percentage saturation of hemoglobin and oxygen. Percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen. You can see that as the oxygen concentration or the PO2 increases, the percentage saturation of the hemoglobin with oxygen is also increasing. Let's go to the details of this graph and we shall find what is the, what is the data the graph is giving to us here. For that purpose, I am going to select two points in the graph, two points on the x-axis. One is that 90, you can see the 90 and this 90 will go and it will give you the value near the 100. Uh, that is almost 100 percentage saturation is given at 90. What is this 90 millimeter of mercury? That is the PO2 of arterial blood. And I am choosing the second value here. The second value I am going to choose is 40. You can see this 40 will be giving the value of uh, hemoglobin saturation at 70. So what is the importance of this 40? This 40 millimeter of mercury is the PO2 of the tissues there. So you can see when it is coming to the arterial blood to that uh, tissues, there is a drop in that uh, percentage saturation and this drop is almost 20 to 25 percentage and this released oxygen it is released into the tissues for the tissue metabolism our book says that 100 ml of the blood delivers 5 milliliter of that oxygen to the tissues and this 5 milliliter of oxygen is the 20 to 25 percentage of the total oxygen that is present in that blood there that is the vital data we are getting from this graph here so here I am going to that second topic from this graph and this is a very very important topic for that uh, competitive exam various competitive exams like NEET UG and NEET PG will be asking various questions from this area and that's very vital topic from this topic that is the shift of that oxygen dissociation curve to the left and right shift to left and right of oxygen dissociation curve let's uh, discuss it in a uh, detail so that in an experimental setup I'm telling you one scenario here in an experimental setup I am going to increase the carbon dioxide so what is that meaning that where the carbon dioxide concentration is normally increasing. The carbon dioxide con concentration is high normally in the tissues. So you know that in the tissues there will be dissociation of oxyhemoglobin will be occurring. What do you mean by that? When the dissociation occurring there is a lowering of a percentage saturation will be occurring there. So we shall see what is the effect of that increased carbon dioxide concentration. I am choosing a value that is 60 and you can see that uh, percentage saturation at the value 60 here. So here there is a dissociation is occurring. So that dissociation will be causing reducing of that saturation, reduction of that uh, saturation. So what will happen? The graph was originally the red line and it will be a new graph that is a green line I have drawn here. So you can see the graph is shifted to one side. Which side is shifted? We will be calling it as the shift to right side. So this is the shift to right side. So what do you mean by that shift to right? That is a decrease in percentage saturation. So on the other hand, we will be doing another experiment where I am decreasing the car carbon dioxide concentration. You know that that is normally happening in lungs and in lungs what will happen? There will be association of hemoglobin and oxygen will be occurring. So that will be increasing the percentage of saturation. So. I am choosing another arbitrary value here that is 40 here and you can see what is that percentage saturation here and experiment I am decreasing the carbon dioxide you know that will be increasing the association that will be increasing the percentage of saturation so you will be seeing that there will be a new spot will be going much higher there and the new graph will be the blue graph you can see that so you can see that that is a new graph deviated from that 
old graph and you can see that is another shift and which direction we'll call it as shift to left so this is the basis of shift to left and shift to right shift to left means increase in saturation here how will you remember this thing there is a mnemonic there is a mnemonic for remembering this thing how will you remember you can remember the left the letter is l and this l for lungs so the condition in the lungs will cause shift to left and on the other hand the shift to right will cause to buy the condition that is present in the tissues how will you remember this various conditions in the lungs and tissues which is causing shift to left or shift to right so in my previous video i have compared the lungs to a village where the very less amount of work is happening very less amount of energy demand is there and cool breeze is coming temperature is low high amount of oxygen is there and i compared the tissues to an industrial area where there is high amount of work is there high energy demand is there there is high pollution is there and high temperature is there and you have to remember this example here lungs as a village and tissues as a uh, industrial area and the lungs conditions will be causing shift to left and tissues will be causing shift to right there here i am going to list down this condition which is causing shift to left and shift to right so two headings are there two columns one is lungs and tissues you know that lungs condition will be causing a shift to left and tissues will be causing a shift to right we shall list down that condition here in the lungs you know that there will be high oxygen low carbon dioxide since there is low carbon dioxide low h plus low acidity and high ph and there will be low amount of 2 3 bpg and low temperature will be there in the tissues there will be low amount of oxygen high amount of carbon dioxide high amount of h plus high amount of acidity will be there low amount of ph high amount of 2 3 bpg and high temperature will be there so this condition will be causing a shift to right and that conditions in the lungs will be causing a shift to left and these are the condition you have to remember which is causing shift to left and shift to right if you are having any difficulty please watch my previous video understanding this thing so that's about that oxygen dissociation curve and thank you for watching me i am dr ashik with you and if you are having any queries about these videos kindly comment below on that comment box and don't forget to subscribe my channel here